Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So uh, it is time yet again for the beauty report. It is uh, the end of August, and uh, I I don't I don't want to talk about it. I'm I'm not okay with this. Like, all right. To be fair, I live in New England, and fall in New England is absolutely beautiful. I love watching the leaves change. I'm all about the pumpkin spice, everything, and boots and scarves, and like I I'm definitely one of those people that feels all the fall vibes. But I love summer so much, I love warm weather, I hate being cold with every fiber of my being. I picked the wrong place in the US to live. So like I'm not, I'm not ready to let go of summer yet. Like I still haven't even been to the beach yet. The beach is an hour away from where I live and I still haven't gone. I don't know what my problem is. Anyway, you guys are not here to listen to me rant about the seasons for half an hour. We've got beauty products to talk about. I'm gonna be sharing some updated thoughts on a bunch of stuff I've been testing out for the last month. Now, I feel like August has been a little bit of a struggle for me. I've missed a whole bunch of uploads. I just had a lot going on, especially with the theater. I mentioned before a bunch of times I volunteer for a community theater near where I live here in Connecticut, and it's a really awesome little place. I am their treasurer now, and uh, while I enjoy it thoroughly, it's a lot of work. So that has been something that's been taking a bit of my attention away from the makeups. But I still have been testing and trying things off camera and I have definitely uh, got, got lots of thoughts to share with you guys. Semi-related side note, I am trying out a brand new foundation for the first time today. I picked up the new Pretty Vulgar Cool AF foundation. That was, like, this is the one thing I got in the Sephora summer bonus event that they had, so I, I don't really have much of a haul. This this is the haul right here. But uh, I am uh, so impressed with this so far. I feel like my skin looks freaking amazing right now. So very excited to update you guys on this in September's beauty report. So without me making this intro 800 years long, let's get into the reviews. So while we are on the topic of foundation, let's quickly talk about the Tarte Found Sealer. Now, this is not like a new, new launch. This came out earlier this year. I just happened to pick it up because it was 50% off at Ulta randomly one day, and I decided, you know what? I'd kind of like to try it. I am a fan of Tarte products, and I really do enjoy their face tape foundation and their shape tape concealer, so I was kind of curious to see how these guys compared with one another. And I would say that the Found Sealer is very similar to the face tape, but a little bit more dewy. I think this guy is going to be a little more friendly for people with dry skin. It also has the benefit of having added SPF. It has a mineral sunscreen in here and it's got SPF 20. So if you wanna be able to top off your sunscreen a little bit, this is nice for that. However, as a person with oily skin, I think I do still prefer face tape because this does dry down a little bit more matte. It's a little bit more long wearing on me than the found sealer. They both have very similar textures. They're very creamy foundations. They're very full coverage. So like if you're the kind of person that wants very light makeup that doesn't really look like makeup, neither of these are going to be your friend. These are more full glam type products. So am I glad that I picked this up? Sure, I'm glad that I got a chance to try it out. It's a nice option for an everyday foundation with sunscreen, but I'm glad I didn't pay full price for it. I don't think I would have been as happy if I had to shell out almost $40 for this foundation because I don't love it as much as the face tape, but I don't hate it. Honestly, I feel like it would be kind of cool to do like a review of all of my foundations in my collection, like a comparative review, just because there are so many new foundations launching right now. I don't have all of them. I don't have an interest in trying all of the new ones. I feel like there are plenty of reviews out there for you guys. If you're curious about like the new ABH or Dose of Colors or the Fenty foundation, etc. But I feel like it might be helpful to look at some foundations that have been around for a while and compare them all to each other and some of the new launches that I've tried. I've been going for the off the beaten path ones as you guys have probably clearly seen. So if that's something that would be of interest to you, leave a comment and let me know. Cause I don't know, I think it might be nice to kind of look at a wide range of foundations, maybe some of the ones you already have and uh, see how they hold up to what's newer on the market. Okay, so let's talk 
Wander Beauty. They have released a lot of new stuff lately. They sent a couple PR packages within the last month. One I just got, so I'm not going to talk about those products yet because I'm still testing them out. They're skincare, so I'm going to need a little while. But these guys were sent, I think, either at the end of July or closer to the beginning of August, so I've been using them for almost a solid month. So those products are their Hidden Glow Brightening Cream, the Glow Ahead Illuminating Face Oil, and then the Trip for Two Blush and Bronzer Duo. Now, if you've been watching my videos in the last month or you follow me on Instagram, you're probably well aware I'm really into these. I think they are absolutely beautiful. I've gotten the most uh, use out of this one here, which is Bellini and Costa Ray. It's the lighter of the two duos. I think this is so natural and so flattering for someone that has a light to medium complexion. These powders are just super soft very blendable. They look really natural on the skin. They're not flat and matte. They have like a slight satiny sheen to them. So I just feel like they make your skin look healthy and pretty. It's pretty much everything I want out of face powders. The only downside, honestly, is that it's a little expensive. I mean, Wander generally has a slightly more luxury price point. This retails for $36, which, I mean, these pans are pretty decently sized. So if you think about buying a full-size blush and a full-size bronzer, spending $36 doesn't seem completely insane. But if you're someone that shops, say, to like a more budget-friendly price point, drugstore, etc., this may be a little more than you're comfortable spending. But if you're interested in this type of product, if you like these kinds of little duos, something that's a little more travel-friendly, the quality is excellent. Like I really have no complaints in that department. Also, the only other little critique that I have is that the only other shade this comes in is this guy right here. And this is not a particularly dark duo. Like I can use this on my skin and it doesn't look crazy on me. So I would love for them to release like one more of these duos in a shade combination that would be really good for people with deep dark skin with a bronzer that would actually work on a person of color because I feel like this is not really quite dark enough for people with very dark complexions. Then the skincare products, I'm also really enjoying both of these. I don't think you necessarily need to buy them both. I think that if you were interested in this type of product, you could probably opt for one or the other and be fine. So the Glow Ahead Illuminating Face Oil is not really oily at all. I would say this is almost more like a serum in texture. It's very liquidy, it's lightweight, it absorbs into the skin really quickly, and it leaves your face feeling very soft, very smooth, plumped up. It doesn't leave it feeling super tacky or anything like that. This is definitely a really beautiful product for prepping the skin. I do think the illuminating name is like slightly misleading. Like there are tiny shimmery particles in this, but I feel like once you rub it into your skin, it doesn't really show up at all. So this is truly illuminating just in the sense of it makes your skin glowy like skincare would make your skin glow. You know what I mean? It's it's not like the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector or Backlight Priming Filter or anything like that. You're not gonna get like a shimmery glow on your face using this. It's just gonna look hydrated. And this is why I say you don't need both of these products because I feel like this cream gives you essentially the same effect. This has a texture much more like a moisturizer. I feel like this is your primer moisturizer hybrid. If you're someone with normal skin or even oily skin like me and you don't want to put on too many layers of greasiness on your face underneath your foundation because then you tend to get too shiny, you could use this as your moisturizer and your primer in one and it will prep your skin really beautifully. Again, this says brightening cream, but it is not a shimmery, illuminating type product. It really only brightens in the sense of it makes your skin naturally glowy and hydrated looking. And it does have a lot of nice skincare ingredients that are supposed to kind of even out the look of your skin tone and brighten the look of your skin over time with repeated use. So honestly, I feel like both of these are good. It kind of comes down to personal preference and what you already have in your existing skincare collection and what you're looking to add in. Because I think if you're the kind of person that's like maybe in need of a new moisturizer or something to wear in the daytime under makeup, this may be a great option because again, it is like a moisturizer and primer in one. Or maybe if you're someone with dry skin and you really want to like amp up the level of your hydration before you put on your makeup, this is something you could layer on to all of your other skincare. All that to say, 
I really like both of these. I've been really enjoying using them. I think that if you decided to splurge and pick one of these up, you probably wouldn't be disappointed in them. Just know that I think of these more as skincare products than makeup. Now, another thing I've been absolutely head over heels in love with is this Jouer Molten Glow Highlight. This may be one of my new favorite highlights. I still absolutely love the Lorac Mega Beam and the uh, Persona Cali Glow Highlight, which is what I'm wearing today. So beautiful. But this is definitely up there in my top five. I think this is a stunning formula. And I love that it's designed to be used on the face and the body. I have worn this on the body a whole bunch. I feel like I have been shimmery a lot lately and, and I'm really liking it. So what I think makes this highlight unique is that it is not a chunky formula at all. It's very, very thin and kind of glittery even, but, but not glittery in the sense of like it has chunky sparkles in it. It's got a really micro fine sparkle that just looks so wet and reflective on the skin, but kind of melts into the skin more so than a highlight that is a little bit thicker and looks like it's sitting on top. It's just so stunning. And it definitely is not a natural highlight in that it gives a lot of reflect. So like you put this on, you're gonna sparkle, you're gonna shine, you have to want to stand out like that. But it's definitely, I think, more flattering than a lot of those very metallic, heavy looking highlights. I think it's just very buttery, it's very silky, it's very thin, but very impactful. It's just, oh, it's so good. Another cheek product I wanted to update you guys on is this Ocean Feel Bronzer from Kiko. So I picked this up, I think at the end of July. Kiko apparently has really great sales on their website. I don't know why I've been sleeping on this uh, for the last, I don't know, however many years, but I was able to get this for 50% off with free shipping and I had an extra coupon code. It was like stupid how good of a deal I got. So yes, Kiko is available at Ulta now. This product you can get at Ulta, but just know you may be able to get a better deal on the Kiko website. I would just keep an eye out. Anyway, as for the product itself, this is the Ocean Feel Bronzer. This is in the shade Warm Honey. They do have a few different shades of this. Two of them are marbled like this. One is just a solid color. And this guy retails for $28, which is kind of up there in that I feel like Kiko is looked at more like Pixie Beauty in my mind. Like it's drugstore-ish, but it's like a higher end of drugstore. But as you can clearly see, you get a ton of product in here. This is a giant compact. I don't love how bulky it is. Like I think that it's beautiful to look at. I love the gold. It is kind of a fingerprint magnet though, which is not the best. But trying to fit this guy in like a makeup organizer, it's not it's not very possible. It would take up like the entire drawer or depending on how deep the drawer is, it might not fit in properly. So that is probably the biggest downside to this. But as a bronzer, I think it works beautifully. This particular color definitely leans a little more warm. So this is gonna give you more of that sun-kissed, ready kind of tone to your skin. This is not a contouring friendly bronzer. So if you are looking for a bronzer that you can also contour with, uh, don't, don't get this. But if you want something that's just going to make your skin look more alive, more bronzed and pretty. I mean, this is gorgeous. It also has like a slight sheen to it. It's not flat and matte, but it's also not really sparkly either, but it blends out nicely. I think it looks really pretty on the skin and in general, I've been enjoying it. One other thing to note, this guy has a scent to it. It's got like a very artificial vanilla-y scent. It's not as good as like the Tarte and Too Faced vanilla scents that they infuse into their products. So it's kind of like, slightly offensive to my nose, but not to the point where it makes this unusable. But just buyer beware, if you are someone that's very sensitive to fragrances, you get headaches, you're gonna wanna steer clear of this guy. All right, so I have one last complexion product to talk about before we move on to eyeshadow palettes. And that is the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. This came in my August BoxyCharm box and I was really excited about that because this is one of those products I've always been really curious about but I didn't wanna shell out the money to test it in case it sucked because it is very expensive. This guy retails for $39, which is the most expensive setting powder that I've ever owned. You also don't get a ton of product in here. It contains 10 grams or 0.35 ounces, which 
which I'm pretty sure like the Fenty setting powder has like 30 grams of product. So that's like a third of the amount and this costs more money. That all being said, I have really, really enjoyed using this powder. And as a person with oily skin, I feel like I wouldn't expect to like this as much as I do because I think it's been marketed towards people with dry skin because it's a water infused powder. It's supposed to not look dry and cakey on the skin. But in a weird way, I think that's why it works so well. I have a tendency to wear a lot of matte foundations and sometimes if you layer a matte powder on top of a matte foundation, it's just a little too much. It starts to look really dry. This I feel like though sets down my matte foundations really beautifully and makes them still look matte but not like overly dry, which I appreciate. It also sets the under eye area really beautifully too. The one thing I will say though is it does darken up the under eye area. So if you're using a concealer that matches your skin tone in your under eye and you apply this, I think it's gonna make your under eyes look a little dark. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Super happy that I was able to try it out without having to uh, pay the full price for it because I do feel like $39 for the amount that you're getting is kind of a lot. It's also only got a six month shelf life. So like it makes sense that they would give you less product because you have to use it up in a shorter amount of time. I just wish that they brought the price down along with that. I will let you guys know though, I am going to be filming uh, my Ulta 21 Days of Beauty recommendations and this is going to be included in the sale. So I think at the sale price of 50% off, totally worth checking out if you were curious about this and you wanted to try it. It is the trippiest powder you will ever use in your life. If you don't know when you apply this, it feels wet on your skin even though it's a dry powder. It's very bizarre, but I'm really into it. So yeah, at half price, totally worth trying. At full price, I don't know. So let's move on to eyeshadow palettes. Now, confession to you guys, I have not played with these Alter Ego palettes enough to feel like I have really solid reviews on them yet. I did do a dedicated video about the Daydream palette where I compared it to the Huda Beauty New Nude palette. So I will throw that up on the cards for you guys if you haven't seen it yet. But I really haven't had a chance to play with this more since filming that video. I've been testing out so many other things. I'm not gonna lie, I got the new Jackie Ina palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills, and I've been really inspired to play with that, so that's kind of been the palette I've been reaching for in the last week. But I do want to give this guy a try again and see if I can make it work better because I really struggled with some of the mattes in here. So just know an update will be coming on this guy. I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging on this palette, but I'm just, I'm not, I'm not ready yet. And then the Goddess palette, I have used this one more because this was the first of the two palettes that I tried out. It's been a few weeks since I've used this, uh, being perfectly honest. But in the times where I have used this palette, I think I've been able to create some nice looks. But again, I haven't been completely blown away. To me, the quality of this feels appropriate for the price point. This palette retails for $16 and I feel like it performs like what I would expect a $16 eyeshadow palette to perform like. It's decent, you can get a really good look out of it. The mattes are like a little chalky, like a little bit patchy for my taste. They're not like the most mind blowing things I've ever used, but I feel like it is a much, much, much more affordable way to get the looks you would find in the Natasha Denona Gold palette. Like that palette is what, $130? It's out of the price range I'm sure for a lot of people. So I definitely think this is a great alternative you will probably have to work with this guy more than the Natasha Denona, but you're also saving like mm, over $100. So I'm definitely not like booting these out of my collection anytime soon. I do wanna continue to use them and create some looks. I think that for the price, they are decent palettes. The metallics in here are really shiny and pretty, but they're not, you know, they're not the most mind blowing palettes I've ever used. Now this palette on the other hand, I have been using a ton in the last month and I haven't shown it on camera so you you would never know that I've been using it but I swear I've tested out I think all of the shades in here at this point and that is the new Persona Identity 2 palette so this was sent to me from the brand which was really awesome I got it the day after it launched in the mail and uh, I have really really enjoyed playing with this guy so I kind of think of this as 
the everyday woman's rainbow palette because you're getting a, a lot of different colorful shades in here, but they are muted jewel tone shades. So you're not getting like a bright red, but you are getting this shade passionate, which is kind of like a rusty pink red. You're not getting like a bright, bright blue, but you're getting this silvery, smoky blue. Honestly, I feel like the boldest and brightest shades in here are unique and driven, the gold and the green. Those are probably a little more intense than people who normally wear like all neutral looks are used to working with. But you know, sometimes it's fun to get out of your comfort zone and I definitely feel like this is the perfect palette for a person that's used to wearing all neutrals to do just that. Now, quality wise, these shadows are exactly what I would expect from Persona. They are very richly pigmented, very easy to work with. The matte shades are very blendable and buildable on the eyes. Like they go on with a decent amount of pigmentation, but not so much that they're difficult to like blend out. And the metallic shades, oh, just like, look at that. Super saturated have a really nice shiny foiled finish to them and they pick up really well with a brush. So if you're somebody that doesn't like to use their fingers, you don't have to use your fingers with this palette. You can use like a flat packing brush. You don't have to wet these shadows. They're gonna go on this intense with a dry brush. It's really amazing. So quality wise, A++. These shadows are bomb. I kind of expected them to be because the identity palette, the original one, the eyeshadows are also amazing in there. The color theory kits, same deal. Like the, the formula that Persona has come up with, it's bomb. I was so sorry guys if it ends up being super noisy in the background of this video, but uh, I'm starving. I wanna finish filming this so I can go get lunch and I have more videos to film, so I like, I can't put it off for another several hours to wait for them to finish mowing. So I apologize. I hope you guys don't mind too much. So let's move on to some skincare. Now I did a dedicated video on Florin B a few weeks back. They are an up and coming indie skincare brand. They use a lot of natural ingredients in their products. If you did not see that video, I will link it up here for you guys in the cards. So I just wanted to let you guys know, I'm, I'm still enjoying these products. I have been using them quite a bit over the last month and I stand behind everything I said in that video. I honestly feel like you're better off watching that to know what I think as opposed to me rehashing it all here. But in general, I would say that it's a reasonably priced skincare line that feels pretty luxurious without a really luxury price point. It's not too fussy, it's more anti-aging focused, so I feel like it's probably a more ideal line for people in their mid 20s and on. Like I don't necessarily think that it's geared towards like teens or people in their early 20s. But if you're a skincare nut like me and you like supporting small businesses, I would highly recommend you check them out and watch that other video because I, I think they've got some good stuff. And then there is the Erno Laszlo skincare that I was sent that I said I would update you guys on. So I was sent all these products for free. Erno Laszlo is a luxury skincare brand, so these products are very expensive. Uh, but I, I wanted to give them a fair shot to see how they worked. Sometimes things are worth the splurge, Sometimes they're not. And I feel like I pretty much still stand behind everything I said in my luxury uh, product video that I just recently did where I was sharing my thoughts on all of, like the most expensive stuff in my collection. I really like the white marble dual phase vitamin C peel. I think it's a really nice exfoliating treatment. Do you need to spend $100 to exfoliate your skin? Not necessarily. But if you're someone, let's say, that is the kind of person that would like go and spend $60 getting a facial or will drop a triple digit amount on a skincare product without batting an eye because you have the means to do so and you feel like it's worth it, I do feel like this product specifically, it works really well. It's a little duo set that comes together and it's a really nice like physical and chemical exfoliant hybrid that really does a good job of brightening your complexion and reducing texture. These two products though, I don't really think they're worth it. The cleanser especially, I think is very overpriced for what it is. I do not feel like this effectively removes makeup and it calls itself a detox double cleanse. So it's supposed to be a singular cleanser that cleanses as effectively as double cleansing your skin. And I do not feel like that is the case at all. If I just use this without a separate makeup remover, uh, it would not get my makeup off. So sure as like a gentle morning cleanser, like it would be fine. I didn't find it to be irritating to my skin, 
but considering how expensive it is, like I don't think it would be worth it to me to spend upwards of $30 for this type of product. And then the antioxidant complex for eyes. So I've switched to using this in the mornings. I was using it kind of morning and night alternating with the Florin B eye cream because I've been testing them both out. And I think the stinging that I talked about in my luxury product video resulted more from having just taken off my eye makeup. So if I had gone in with Bioderma, just removed my eye makeup and then put this in my eye area, it burned. And maybe part of that is just that my eye area was a little more sensitized from having just been rubbed or something. I don't know. But I definitely notice significantly less burning when I use this in the morning when I'm not having just rubbed my eyes. That being said, I haven't seen any kind of miracles with my under eye area. I don't feel like I'm noticing a significant difference with how my concealer and whatnot is going on. Like it feels nice, it's, it's refreshing. And I think if you like stuck this guy in the fridge, it would be really, really nice. But it's like, it's $80 and I just, I don't, I don't know. I'm not seeing results that warrant such a high price point. And then I wanna close things out with some hair stuff. Uh, all of this has been sent to me in PR. Some of it I like. Some of it I don't like so much. So let's talk about what I actually do like first. Uh, I have put this Sole Toscana Awakening Shampoo and Conditioner to the test for a while now, and I ended up liking these a lot more than I expected. So when I first talked about this duo in my haul video at the beginning of August, I raised the concern about the fact that the shampoo has sulfates. I generally don't like sulfates. I find them to be very drying on the hair and the skin, so I tried to avoid them at all costs but I figured there were a lot of other really hydrating and nourishing ingredients in these formulas. So I figured I'd give it the benefit of the doubt and like to see how they actually worked. And this little pair here does make your hair extremely silky. I found it to be very, very hydrating. The shampoo does not get overly lathery, which you do expect with sulfate shampoos. This honestly performed much more like a sulfate-free shampoo, even though it's not. And I felt like it cleaned my hair nicely, but it didn't leave it dry, it didn't leave it stripped, and the conditioner, again, makes your hair super silky, but doesn't leave it feeling really weighed down. The only thing I noticed, like if I was using this for every shampoo over the course of a couple of weeks, my hair definitely got more uh, flat. Like my, my hair is naturally extremely straight. This is what my hair looks like if I just got out of the shower and let it air dry. If I blow dried it, like it just boom, it basically does nothing. So I'm the kind of person that likes to add texture to my hair so I have a little more body and movement. And I definitely felt like this kind of worked against my texturizing products because it made my hair very silky. So like it, it was not gonna wanna hold any kind of a curl or anything. I mean, my hair is hard to curl as it is. So I might personally be a little less inclined to use this for every single shampoo, just cause I kinda, I want my hair to be a little less slick. But I would think if you were someone that struggled with frizz or had uh, drier, more coarse hair, you may actually really like these a lot. They also smell really good too. They're infused with cypress, lemon, and mint essential oils. So it has a very spa-like scent to me and it has a little bit of that cooling minty tingle going on. It's not too intense. I don't love things that are really, really minty and cold feeling, but it was nice. It's very like energizing to use. So I am happy to say I do like these quite a bit. Just know they expensive. Each bottle I think is like 28 or $29 or I think maybe like the conditioner's 29 and the shampoo is 28. Either way, like more than $50 for the set. So whether or not these are worth picking up is uh, kind of highly dependent on what you feel comfortable spending on hair care. If you're someone that generally tends to buy more salon brands, things that are a little bit more high-end, Bumble and Bumble, IGK, etc., this is pretty on par with that and I think the quality of these are really nice. But I don't think you have to spend this much money to get a good shampoo and conditioner. I really like some of the Pacifica ones and those are like $10 a bottle. And then finally, and I hate to leave things on like kind of a sour note, but uh, I, I have not figured out how to make these R Co products work for me. I was really excited to try them. Like the brand let me pick out what I wanted. These were gifted to me, so I, I did not have to pay for them. And as you might imagine, I opted for the thickening styling products from their collection. I got their new balloon dry volume spray and their Rodeo Star thickening style foam. And I just, I, I don't know why I'm struggling with these. If you've tried either of them, 
please let me know if they work for you and how you use them and how you make them work because I'm, I'm confused. So with Rodeo Star, my biggest issue is that I find that this makes my roots look very greasy and dirty. Like my hair can be perfectly washed and I've tried using less, but it seems like no matter how much I use, if I massage this kind of into my roots the way I would a normal mousse, it makes my hair look just really gross and it does add volume but it's just it's very sticky and I have a lot of other mousses that don't do that so that really disappointed me. I definitely have had more success with Balloon, the dry volume spray. This definitely does not have the same problem. It does not make your hair look dirty. If anything my issue is this is like too light. I, I, I want like these to, to like meld together and I want this guy to give some of its grit to this and I, I want this to give some of its lightness to this and then I and then I would be happy. Because I feel like this compared to let's say like the IGK beach spray, it's just not enough. I'm gonna try spraying in a little bit right now so you guys can see. Like this definitely adds volume. Like it's a dry volume spray and, and that's what it gives you and it keeps your hair very movable. It doesn't make it feel sticky or crunchy which is cool, but it just kind of feel like after you've finessed it, it just kind of goes flat. It doesn't give me enough volume. And considering that it's kind of an expensive product, there are other dry texturizing sprays I like better than this, so I'm having a hard time recommending it. So yeah, on that note, I uh, think that's everything I have to share with you guys today. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed hearing all of my uh, reviews and updates on these products. Definitely be sure to leave a comment down below if you've tried any of these things and let me know how they worked out for you, if you like them, if you don't, are we on the same page? And if you enjoy this series on my channel, you like reviews, you like monthly updates, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I always really appreciate your support and your feedback so, so much. And as always, if you're new, if it was your first time here, I mean, thank you for, for coming and checking out my video and sticking around to the very end. And I'm sorry I didn't say welcome earlier, but I hope you will consider, you know, clicking the subscribe button down there and uh, coming back and hanging out with me again. On that note, I'm, uh, I'm gonna let the mowers, I'm gonna let the mowers mow. I'm gonna let them do their thing and I'm gonna go eat lunch because I'm absolutely starving right now. Uh, and then I'm gonna come back and film my Ulta 21 Days of Beauty recommendations, which should be going up on Sunday, which is the first day of the sale. So be sure to check back for that. And yeah, other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.